take a look at the strength of the Trump campaign. Joining us now, a special correspondent at Vanity Fair, Gabriel Sherman. His new piece is entitled Inside the Terrifyingly Competent Trump 2024 Campaign. And also joining mm -hmm. us, national political reporter for The Washington Post, Isaac Arnsdorf. He's the author of the new book entitled Finish What We Started, The MAGA Movement's Ground War to End democracy. Gabe, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. In your new piece, you write in part, quote, while Trump's 2016 agenda was frequently stymied by infighting and incompetence, available signs point to a second West Wing staffed by loyalists who would actually carry out his policies. President Trump knows who can deliver and who can't. The backstabbers who weren't around in 2016 won't be in the next White House. Mm -hmm. Trump's senior campaign advisor, Jason Miller, told me Trump's 2024 campaign has already demonstrated Trump can run an effective operation. This campaign is locked down, a Republican close to Trump said. Most of all, Trump is disciplined because fear is a powerful, powerful motivator. His wealth and freedom are at stake. He is terrified of going to jail, a longtime friend from New York told me. The criminal charges helped solve Trump's messaging problem. Prior to the indictments, Trump was a one-line artist singing a tired tune that the 2020 election was stolen. But the dozens of felony counts gave him new material. He cast himself as a political martyr being prosecuted by the Biden White House. He's so distracted with the legal stuff, that's why the campaign is smooth, the Republicans to Trump, close to Trump said. And Gabe, mm -hmm. you know, he says out loud that he would be a dictator and that he is your retribution to his voters. He says a lot of the quiet part out loud, uh, loud even the frightening part out loud. He also has a campaign construct mm -hmm. that now has his daughter-in-law built in. There are a lot of different factors to this that didn't exist the first time around. That's right, Mika. You know, everyone here on the show has been covering Trump for years. And the big story in 2016 and to some extent 2020 was that his campaign was a soap opera. It was a, it was clashing personalities. It was nonstop drama. And covering this cycle, the thing that I've been struck by time and time again is that it's really mm -hmm. a low drama campaign. These are operatives who are focused, who don't want press, who don't want their egos out there. They are focused on getting Donald Trump into the White House in November 2024, because as I write in the piece, his freedom is at stake. Really, the only thing that is guaranteed to keep Donald Trump out of jail is becoming the next president of the United States and appointing an attorney general who will get these charges thrown out. It's really that simple. And I think that is really why you see Donald Trump so focused. And yes, he says incendiary things on the stump. But when it comes to the mechanics of running the campaign, it is a much different operation. Well, and, and of course, the campaign, I mean, insiders on the campaign have told me that their goal is to basically minimize him as much as possible, mm -hmm. keep his mouth shut, stop him from blowing himself up every day. That's right. You know, he uh, every time he opens his mouth, he creates a news news cycle. You know, at the fundraiser uh, this weekend, we saw uh, headlines that he said, why don't we have more immigrants from, quote, nice countries and mm -hmm. happen all the countries he happened to mention were, you know, majority white populations. You know, he says the quiet part out loud. This is a candidate who does create his own controversies. But, you know, that really is baked in now, to, I think, to his brand. And I think the mechanics, the underlying ground game, the, you know, getting the state parties in line, getting the Republican National Committee in line is really, I think, what is fueling this, you know, success that he's had on the campaign trail. And now it's apparently he's got the money behind him as well. Yeah, and Gabriel, we've both noted that despite his public proclamations that he'd be happily be Nelson Mandela and go to jail, <laughs> he's actually terrified of that prospect and that fuels a lot of these unhinged uh, truth social rants. Um, Isaac, congrats on the, on the book. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take this conversation and broaden out a little bit of the, what you're writing about, the MAGA movement writ large with, in many ways, Steve Bannon and mm -hmm. others, is sort of the intellectual heft behind it. What are some of their goals? How do they hope to use Trump to accomplish what they want? Well, Gabriel mentioned the ground game, and, and that's a huge part mm -hmm. of what this book is about. The, what happened, uh, the way that the movement regrouped from January 6th, going into the party structure itself, um, starting at the bottom, at the precinct level, going all the way up through the counties, the districts, the states, 
getting to the RNC, making it possible to get a new chair and co-chair who would even be Trump's own daughter-in-law. And whatever's going on at the Trump campaign, whatever's going on with the Trump trial, that organization is going to be out there in the field uh, focusing on uh, looking for voter fraud and also for uh, getting out the vote among Trump supporters. And that is a huge part of making him a more formidable candidate than he's been in the past. So, Rev, I'm going to pitch you a softball and just let you weigh in on your thoughts about Donald Trump comparing himself to Nelson Mandela. Well, uh, that is a softball. I hope the bases are loaded. But I, 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 you know, the insult of that is that Nelson Mandela did 27 years in jail to, among other things, get blacks in South Africa the right to vote. Donald Trump is facing jail for denying blacks and others the right to vote. I mean, he's a direct opposite of Nelson Mandela if he goes to jail. And I might buy, uh, say, by the way, Donald, if you're watching, Mandela did 27 years, <laughs> if that's what you want. In, in, in that, if you want to equal him there, there's a lot of people who wouldn't be disappointed. Uh, but, but I think that uh, uh, what, what uh, caught my eye, Isaac, about your book, because I think some of us that consider ourselves progressive, um, me and the civil rights side of that, failed to really build, we're trying to work on this now with Nash Action Network, an infrastructure. Talk more about how they redid themselves and went from the bottom, very local, very grassroots up, because I think that's underestimated in all of the flash we see of Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. It's been very under the radar, and it's just in the past few years. It's really since Trump left office that this has been happening. And, and Steve Bannon had a huge part in this by popularizing this idea called the precinct strategy, which was exactly that, Stop starting at the bottom at the precincts and going up in the party organization itself. This was the innovation over the Tea Party, which was like, you know, everyone go to this Tea Party meeting, mm -hmm. you know, this Tea Party, that Tea Party. And, and the idea here was, no, 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 we have the Republican Party, and we're going to use the Republican Party organization, the Republican Party structure. There's real power in that. There's money. There's volunteers. There's infrastructure. That is the, the infrastructure that all the candidates use. And, and they're not the, the motivation for that which has a lot of truth in it, actually, is that the reason that Trump failed in 2020 was because of a few uncooperative Republicans. And that by taking over the party apparatus and purifying the party, they would make sure that that wouldn't happen again. Gabe, you mm -hmm. did a great job here of nailing the sophistication of mm -hmm. the Trump campaign this go round, mm -hmm. and that it is not just a hack organization yeah. the way it was playing by the see through their pants back in 2016. That's right. So if the campaign competency continues over into the policy realm, mm -hmm. that's where I think Democrats should really worry if, you know, not only that the campaign might be successful and yeah. win, but then in the policy realm. What are you hearing about there? Do you think that it's going to be run with equal sophistication? Well, I mean, by their own uh, admission, you know, Jason Miller said that if they win the election, that the White House will be staffed only with w loyalists. They've weeded out all the backstabbers. You know, a really in important figure in this whole drama is Johnny McEntee, who was uh, Donald Trump's former body man in the 2016 cycle. He rose up in Trump world. He became the head of uh, White House personnel in the uh, Trump administration. And his job is really to vet thousands and thousands of potential appointees who will go into the civil service and carry out the MAGA agenda. He's working with the Heritage Foundation, and they're creating, similar to this ground game, basically an army of people that will be ready in January 2025 to get into the government and carry out Trump's agenda. And so you think Kushner might return as Secretary of State? Well, that's a whole separate conversation. I think, you know, obviously Jared and Ivanka are seeing which way this is going. And if Trump wins, it's clearly he's leaving that door open to return uh, to Foggy Bob as the America's top diplomat. Gabe, uh, let me ask you finally, how does the campaign interact with people like Steve Bannon and Cash Patel when they, they go on podcasts and they say that, they're, that, that Trump is going to throw political opponents and reporters uh, in jail, and he looks into the camera and says, "And Morning Joe, we're looking at you. We're coming after you. You're basically you're going to jail." How does this button-down campaign uh, respond to that? Well, I think they not only do they respond to it, Joe. I think they're encouraging it. You know, Jason Miller is is close to Steve Bannon. Um, there's a whole network of, of people who have 
while they're not officially part of the campaign, they have links to the campaign, and they're using it through the MAGA media to get the ground, you know, to get the troops, the MAGA foot soldiers all riled up. And, you know, I think we should, we've learned all uh, since the last cycle, let's not, you know, pretend, take Trump at his word. I think the media, all mm -hmm. of us, Democratic Party, even the few Republicans who are anti-Trump are sort of not paying attention. Just look at what they're saying. This is a national emergency. And I think Donald Trump is just hoping that they throw enough sand in people's eyes, he can get into office. But as Anthony Scaramucci told me, Trump's former communications director, you know, this, they want to be a dictator. He said it out loud and we should take him at his word. Isaac, we'll leave it with you since uh, you've written the book on it. Um, Trump says he's going to throw uh, reporters in jail. He's going to throw political opponents in jail. Kash Patel, uh, who is supposed to play a, a large role, has said the same thing. They're going to reporters that aren't positive toward Donald Trump are going to be thrown in jail for treason. Um, is, is this part of the game plan? Well, Trump will never say a bad thing about anyone who supports him. And uh, the campaign will never contradict the boss. So much as there are some uh, strategists on the campaign who are looking at that as perhaps not the most helpful general election message to win over independents and moderates who are going to decide the election, um, still never will hear Trump disavow it. Um, the same as he still... Uh, trying to align himself with the defendants in the Capitol riot on January 6th, um, promoting the song that he recorded with them, um, uh, offering to pardon them. Uh, he, will, he has still never uh, said that he'll accept the outcome of the election and that he will disavow violence. The new book is entitled Finish What We Started, The Mega Movement's Ground War to end democracy. It goes on sale tomorrow. The Washington Post's Isaac Arnsdorf, thank you very much for being on this morning. And Vanity Fair special correspondent Gabriel Sherman, thank you as well. You. We'll be reading your piece online now. And still ahead. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it you tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.